open, so um, there's a mailbox, we'll call it that, it's not a mailbox, but you can drop your cards there so we can help distribute it there. Um, anything else? Yes, Christmas Eve service is at 6 o'clock. We'll be doing communion and a candlelight service, so make sure you join us for that. Um, any other announcements that I might have missed? I'd like to thank everybody from yesterday. Thank you for all your hard work in cleaning the leaves and cleaning our garden back here. All right, huh? You open us in prayer. I will. Let's pray. Now, Father, we thank you for once again and having this opportunity to come to your house and worship the Lord. We thank you for all the folks present this morning. Lord, we pray that we go forth now and worship you. Pray that all that we say and all that we do glorifies you. Please lead us now, re energize us, go into the week. Please bless this time of fellowship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'd like to invite you guys to come and like the acting plan. Of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, 
Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your Lord.
I know that you do that back here at your church already, but you know, there are people that I've overheard that they're stressed out about getting their cars done. It has to be done by a certain day. And I'm like, is that really what's supposed to happen? Why are you even sending the cars if it's going to make you feel that way? And then gift giving. Gift giving is awesome. And the shepherds, I, I'm going to tell you more about how amazing that is. But it's supposed to be a wonderful thing. People get upset about that news. And stress out about that food. And then family meals. I know we're going to have a meal after this. I am looking forward to it. It's going to be a little bit forward to my bread and my cheese I usually get. And I don't do this usually. Probably they're going to have to give it away this time next year if they do it again. But, but I'm excited about it. Don't you know? There are times that people get together for family meals and it looks like it would be so beautiful. In fact, I saw this channel called the Hallmark Channel. Someone left TV with 300 channels. And it looked like it was amazing. And, and every family meal was just wonderful. And then I come to find out, you know, people stress out about that too. But they ain't going to have enough food and they ain't going to get fixed or somebody's going to get upset or somebody's going to say the wrong thing. You know? I'm sad for you. If these things are able to rob you of the joy, the real joy that exists at Christmas time. So, I want to continue and ask. And I know this may be difficult for you. It's kind of what we do as shepherds. But have you ever just slowed down and tried to take in what's around you? I mean, maybe it's just pausing once you get around that family table and looking at the family God's given and appreciating the whole family, yourself included, flaws and all. Or maybe it's looking at the decorations. The decorations as you drive by somewhere, letting the little three-year-old, maybe you even turn around and get back so they can get it back. Did you ever just slow down I truly believe the simple life is what helped me be ready for the experience of my lifetime, the arrival of the Christ child, the promised Messiah. You know, experiencing God through simplicity, well, and though some people see me as too poor and too dirty and without a purpose to have a real relationship with God, they really do. And that's some of what you've heard about, because how can God be a part of somebody that has a life like that? And honestly, there was a time that I allowed the way others saw me to cause me to see myself that way as well, and I didn't think I was worthy. But at some point, I quit listening to all the voices. When I got quiet, when I separated myself from the noise around me, I began to encounter what I only know now to describe as joy. This came through an unexplainable connection with God. I began to recognize God's presence in my life. I had an earthly father for whom I was very thankful. In fact, my earthly father was even helpful in, in enabling me to figure out and appreciate the amazing blessings that I have in my life today. And a part of that included introducing me to my everlasting Father, God. So, what is this everlasting Father? Let me tell you really quickly, because it's a part of this whole joy thing. When you know your everlasting Father, you experience a love like no other. I felt accepted like I had a purpose. If my purpose was caring for the sheep, it was a and you know what? When I had that time that I was quiet, it was amazing how God spoke to me when I was out in the fields. Just being quiet. And then this whole idea of protector is close to the heart of a shepherd because we protect our sheep. But as I protect my sheep, God protected me. And let me tell you this. As a shepherd... I protect my sheep from things that the sheep don't even know exist. I come to understand that my father, my everlasting father, does the same thing. He is my protector. But not only is he my protector, he is my provider. 
You see, I am poor. I am dirty at times. I came to trust God that I would have what I needed even when I did not know where it was going to come from. And when you have a provider that you can trust, your everlasting Father, it changes the way you view life. It changes the way you live life. And you don't worry. You embrace the joy. Besides that, my eternal Father is also my comfort, comfort. Not just from the elders, because you know, being a shepherd, I've spent most of my life outside, and we can go through storms and it rains, and and there's, it, I just, I appreciate the protection I have in that way. But God is also a comforter that at times protects me from myself when I begin to let my mind go into the dark places. What I needed was peace in the midst of the storm. Have you ever been there? Has it ever been to a point when, when you're just struggling and, and, and life, it seems to be getting darker and, and there seems to be no comfort anywhere? I'm telling you, I've experienced that. And God, the eternal Father, brings comfort, but not just comfort, a sense of peace that is not anywhere else at all. So you see, all of these things have even more meaning when you put that word everlasting in front of it. I came to appreciate that the God who has always been and who always will be is my everlasting Father. Well, I'm not real sure about this because I don't know a lot of you very well, but I'm guessing if a simple shepherd like me struggles with the concept of love, protection, needs, and peace, you might struggle with some of these as well. But it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. And I'm not just standing up here because I'm standing up here where I am and I'm a shepherd. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. You see, I know God cares for you and wants you Every one of you to have the joy I have. Advent isn't just a time when we have a few words and we talk about them. They're real and they have meaning and we're to embrace them and we're to live them and we're to experience them. You see, I began to encounter joy when I encountered God, but I didn't really experience joy until I met the Christ child. That was the miracle of God that took the idea of God's love, His provision, His comfort, and His peace from an everlasting Father to another undeniable level. When I said simplicity opened me to the experience of the Christ child, it's not just seeing the baby Jesus, but understanding the significance not only for me, but for all of humanity. Because you see, I've told you already those ways that it became real to me. Who God is and what He did and how much He loved me. And you need to see that and know that too. But then beyond that, it begins to be a part of everything we do and how we live. Because God loves all of us that much. This is what God promised. This is who God is. Very often when the Christmas story of Christ's birth is told, we as shepherds are lifted up as an example that if God would come to these lowly shepherds, He will come to anyone. And this is true. And I believe that. I'm a part of living that. But I believe there is even more value in what we as shepherds experience that I want to share with you today. It's realizing that it might be easier to recognize the real meaning of the birth if we let go of some of the distractions and the noise that burdens our souls. When we do, it enables us to move beyond simply seeing the Christ child in the manger to experiencing the joy gifted to us through the child from the everlasting Father. 
want to share with you. You've already heard it shared earlier, but in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, hear this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be, that will cause great joy for all the people. Hear that again. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. That means you. And that's not just happening. That's the type of joy that we've been talking about. And I know God wants this for you. So, I encourage you not to be like me. Nobody wants to be like a shepherd. But I encourage you to learn from experiences I've had that the simple can be good. And don't let things rob your joy. You see the candles that we have here today. I don't know how much you know about that, but in, in my journey, I've learned that the purple candle represents royalty. And that Christ child was to become a king, and you should know that and celebrate that. But that purple also represents penitence and suffering, and you probably know as much as not more than me about how what was to happen in the life of this child. But you know the pink candle stands out. The pink candle is different because the pink candle reminds us to rejoice. The pink candle reminds us that while that Christ child on one day was going to die, he wasn't going to stay dead. The pink candle reminds us that it isn't all sackcloth and ashes. It's about having time to have a party. And you know what? Parties are a part of what God desires us to have in our life. And if you want to see what a party needs to look like, you come and join my little shepherd. <laughs> they know how to party. And they do it wonderfully. Do you know that there are modern day shepherds? They don't look like me. They don't dress like me. They don't smell like me. They may not even be as poor as I am. But let's tell you a little bit about them. Speaking of those little young ones, they're some of the first ones I see. And I gave them a nickname. I called them the puddle sloshers. <laughs> you know why? Because you talk about joy. When one of these young people see a puddle of water, they get this big look on their face and you know what they're going to do. They're going <laughs> to run right to it and jump up and down and up and down. And it makes them so happy. And yes, it does. <laughs> she agrees. <laughs> but something happens at some point in life that the public sloshers can get distracted by things that become more complex than life. And public sloshing is no longer appropriate because it might get your shoes wet or it might splash some dirt on your nice clothes. Or it might cause you to get cold. So we're told we're not supposed to cold wash anymore. But a real child understands the joy that comes from the grace of the moment. There's another, there's another shepherd, and I recognize it. You know what he was doing? He was driving a trash truck. And you know, there were people, just like they looked at me, and they didn't think I was all that were. They were just dismissing the guy driving the trash truck, but you know what I saw? He actually drove the trash truck right up through here, right in front of this church. And as he did, he had a smile on his face, and I wondered why he was smiling. And then as he got over to the playground where some kids were, he tooted his horn, and those kids jumped up and down and shouted and celebrated, and you would have thought he was a hero. Because he paid attention to them. And he came. And there would be some people that would say, Why? I would mean, ask, Why not embrace life that way? 
We should be satisfied and thankful for what we have. And when we do, that's a step toward embracing the simplicity of what it meant to be a shepherd in this Advent Sunday. I also think that as we do these things, it's important and enables us to be honest with ourselves, with God, and with others. We get rid of the mask. We get quit pretending to be someone that we think somebody else wants us to be. And we get comfortable being the person God created us to be. And we grow into that. So, you might ask, my new shepherd friend, Joe is your name, I think? And in case you forgot, I want you to remember my name. It's not that hard. But I want to tell you that to begin... To do that, you, you might say, I really want that, but the world that I live in is just so, you don't understand your shepherd. You've got it easy. It's easy for you to do that. Because I used to be the one people look down on, and now you're telling me it's easier for me, and I don't have all the problems that you've got. That might be true today. But I want you to hear this. In fact, it's not even from me, it's from King David who lived long before I did and was wiser than I did. And he put this in one of his songs. He said, From God, be still and know that I am God. That's where, that's where I found it. And you know, I know you're busy. I know you have a lot going on. I know you have deadlines. I know you have schedules. But can you find just a little bit of time, just a little bit, to be still and to know God. And for you to be still may be different than my being still. It may not mean going into a field. It may mean sitting around a dinner table and just listening to what people have to say. It may be getting away somewhere for an hour or so and just trying to know God in whatever way. But I tell you, the scripture is amazing. I think it should be a part of every Christian. Because particularly in the world that I've been introduced in the, to in the past week, that's a problem. So, I tell you today, the joy can be yours. The joy of the shepherds, the joy of the Christ child, the joy of Christmas is yours. Take it. Experience it. Share it. And Christmas will be everything God desires you to have this year. I promise you that. The scripture promises you that. God loves you that much. I'm going to ask our praise team to come to lead us in our closing. And as they do, I'm going to be down here at the front. And I'll kind of take my Joe's character off even though I'm not going to try to go do taking the car off. We're thankful that you're here today. If you're a regular, you know this. If not, I want you to hear it from me. We don't want to pretend here. We don't want to come here and put on our church faces. We want to be real. And the messages that I hope we hear, the messages that I know are in the Bible, are relevant for today. They're not just stories about something that took place hundreds and thousands of years ago. It did. But that impacts us as much today as it did before. And if you are struggling, in any way, and my guess is there's not a person here that's not. If, you, if you've lived a week this past week and you haven't had some struggle, I want to talk to you about it because there's some type of miracle going on in here. We all have struggle. But if we allow God to be a part of it, even in the midst of that struggle, we have joy. And so you see, it's amazing to me when those children walk in 
the smiles that popped up. It's as though whatever struggles you've had in the faith, because there was one of, I am not making this up. There was one of the members of praise team up here that said before it started, I don't know how this Sunday's going to go because them people look like they ain't got much joy. <laughs> and it changed just like that when the children walked in. But your life didn't change all of a sudden. All of your situations changed. You just began to experience what God wanted to give you today in terms of those children sharing the way they did. And the same is true when we just open ourselves to be able to see what God places before us. Be willing to do that. I'm going to be here if you want to come. I'd love to pray with you. If you have any type of decision to make, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is no better time than now to have a conversation about that. And I would love to do that. And our church doors are always open. If this is a place that for whatever you feel a warmth and connection, a place that you could make a church home, our doors are open and, and I would love to talk to you about that as well. You just come forward and let us know. Or maybe, but well, one of the beautiful things about God nowadays is you don't have to go through somebody else. You can pray directly. If you want to come and you want to kneel at this altar, if you want to pray and you say, I want to get serious about this joy thing because I know I need it in my life and I haven't felt it in a long time. You can come and you can kneel and you can do that. And yes, you don't have to do it here. You can do it somewhere else and God hears you there. But if you do it right here and now, you're much less likely to forget it. You're much less likely to take it for granted. You're much less likely to walk out and say, well, I want it. Because you're making a commitment before God and before God's people. And even though they may not know what it is, I promise you, there are many people here that will be behind you praying for whatever. So I invite you, if you would, to stand with us and sing, respond as God will be.
sometimes we just spend too much time back to life. We've got sent according to the world. And so I walked back there, and I asked Layla if I could dance with her. And she said yes. And I am not going to forget that for a very long time. And neither will my two boys who I just embarrassed. <laughs> but I love her. And we need to be willing to embrace that type of joy. And we need to celebrate the land who just let it go and be who God calls us to be. So before we go, I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. Christy mentioned it to you. This is what's happening today. No one should leave unless you really have to, and I will tell you why. Because we got something for you. Most of you already do, and you've got the plan and the plan on staying. But if you came here today, you didn't know what was going on. I believe... I know this is women's gift to you, and I hope and believe it may be God's gift for you as well. This is what we're going to do. Never done it before. In fact, I was talking to John and Susie, and they came in. It's their first time here. They said, they're looking for a place to go for Africa. And I said, we picked a good place. We're doing something. I said, you ain't got to be worried about not knowing what's going on today. None of us ever done this before. <laughs> but this is what we're doing, so good to explain it to everybody. And when we dismiss here, there's a room right next to here. That coffee you've been smelling called during the service, it's in there, and it's for you. And there's also juice, and there's hot chocolate, if some of the children, some want that. And, and you can hang out and mingle a little bit. And then about 15 minutes or so after that, we're going to come back in here. And it's going to just be an a informal type of time. We typically have small groups. We're going to do the small groups today. We're going to do something different together. You're going to see this a little video. How often do you get to go to church and watch a video? So we're going to see just a really short clip, and it's going to relate to this whole idea of an eternal father. And I think you're going to enjoy that. It's going to bring that Christmas sense to you in a really powerful way, I think. And we're just going to chat a little bit informally, and I think that would be good. And then as that wraps up, we're going to have an amazing party parade. Not really. We're just going to walk down to the social hall, and it's going to be some of the most amazing food that you're going to have this season. And it's for you. And it's for you. It's a gift from the people of Woodland, but it's also a gift that we're all given by God. So unless there's some really good reason you have to leave, please play on saying, and you know what, I'm going to tell you, and I mean this. I mean it, and you're not going to take me serious at first, but I could play on serious, so I want you to take me serious. So if there's some of you who say, but you know, I've got some people I'm supposed to meet for lunch. This is supposed to be happening. I want you, as soon as this is done, I want you to call them. I say, you know what? I'm treating you to lunch today. Come to worship. <laughs> and, and tell them the pastor told me to do it. I know you didn't come to worship. I know you didn't. They just want you to come to me. I mean it. Come. I'm going to do it. You come with me. I want you to do that. And we'll be tickled to death to have it. I mean that. Let's experience joy in a way that just we don't usually do it. That's what we want to happen today. So, um, our praise team is going to kind of sing us out. You can mix and mingle if you want to. I know, I don't know if some of the Well Center families have to go back in the stairs if you need to do that. If you have to go, I understand maybe they need a nap before they come back tonight because I know I'll need to come back tonight. That's the case. They have a reasonable excuse. They don't. But, um, but if you need to do that, um, I do hope I get to speak to you before you leave. It has been such a pleasure and wonderful to have you guys with us. But if you're able to stay, we would love that. And when the other group comes back in here, there's going, there's for children, we have a children's class that will be going on. Miss Heather, back in the back, raise your hand, Miss Heather, so they know who it is. She's actually on our Well Center Committee, so there's a connection there. But also, um, she and her mom do an amazing job. They'll have crafts, they have some, probably some Christmas creation things to do. So if your children want to stay, they will be, they will have lots of fun. I, we're going to have so much fun here. I don't know if the children have as much fun as we do, but they're going to have fun. And, um, Again, think about doing that if you can. And um, Lord, I just I'm filled with joy right now, and I thank you for that. I thank you for what your scripture has to say. I thank you for the spontaneity of, of a young child who can draw us in. And I pray that we will live into that, that we will be more willing to be a puddle slosher when it just doesn't seem to make any sense. That we will embrace the opportunities that you give us, that we will experience the joy in the midst of struggles. God, help us to really know and understand what this Advent Sunday is all about. The joy, the love of being who you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. If the Well Center kids could come